Hello my little butterflies. In this video is going to be what I feel like is going to turn into a very lengthy video about my wrap ups from February through May. Excuse her. So if you hear any of that, that's Kalea. And if you hear the TV, that's also Kalea. So, like I said, um, I re I didn't know I didn't do a wrap up for February. Like I swear to God, I did one for February. But okay, so I'm gonna just run through February, March, and April, just telling you what I read in my ratings form. I'm not going into any detail. And then for May, I'm going to you know kind of elaborate just a little bit, not a lot, because I want to do some reviews today as well. Okay, in February, I read seven books. Yeah. So like I was saying, I read seven books in February. Um, I had I think ten books on my TBR. I wrote it down, sorry, I'm gonna be looking down. Sorry. First, well, it wasn't the first book that I read, but I'm just gonna sit in this order. So I read Solo by Kwame Alexander. I gave that 3.5 stars. I also did a review for it. I will link that in the eye. That is one of the few reviews that I have posted. You got to go and check that out. They may have been the last review that I posted. Go and check it out. I also read The Good Brainer by Terry Farish. I gave that four stars. Then I read The Amazing The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and I gave that five stars. I have a review for it. I probably will have it uploaded before I post this video because it's the last video I have on my camera that I had pre-recorded a while ago and I never uploaded it. So that's probably going to be up before this. But I have read it and I'm going to link the review so you guys can go check it out. I loved it so much. Also, before I get too far ahead, any of the books that I'm talking about, if I haven't done a video review for them, even if I have done a video review for them, I do review every book that I read on my blog. And my blog is linked down below in the description bar. So go check my bar. No, 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 my bar. <laughs> go check my blog out if you want to see my reviews for these books that I'm talking about. Then I started reading The High Five Fight Club by Carly Houston. It's a graphic novel. Um, I read the first issue, I gave that three stars. And then I also read the second issue and I also gave that three stars as well. Then I read Rat Queens Volume 4 by Curtis J. Weed and I gave that three stars as well. I kind of was like, eh, about it. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be another volume. I I would hope it would. I would I would still read it again anyway. Um, because I did kind of really like Red Queens, but I said I wasn't gonna get into all that. That's for a whole nother video. And then I read Surprise Me by Sophie Kinsella, and I gave that 2.8 stars. I did a review for it. Y'all can go and check it out on yourself. Okay, now moving on to March. In March, I read five books. Um, first, I read the Disney manga version of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas by June As Asuka, or uh, Asuka, I don't know, but I gave it two stars, I didn't really, I didn't really like it, I never, I'm going to tell y'all something, don't talk about me, but I've never even seen the movie for The Nightmare Before Christmas, um, <laughs> don't ask me why. I, I always see it come on all the time around holiday time. I think it even comes out. I think it even comes on for Halloween. I think, but I just never, never looked at it. So this was my first experience, and I just was didn't like it. Then I read Electric Arches by Eve L. Ewing. I gave that three and a half stars. It was very beautifully written, but I think because of the Kindle version, they had like pictures that had small writing in it but you could not tell, it was like illegible, so you'll go pages and looking at these pictures and don't know what you're looking at. Then I listened to the audiobook for The Unstoppable October and May by Sharon G. Flake, and I gave it four stars. Like, it was, it's definitely in the, my top favorite audiobooks, and it restored my faith in audiobooks. I loved listening to it so much. It was an awesome middle grade novel. You guys should definitely go and check it out. It was really great. Then I finished The Bells. I started it in February, but I finished it in March, and I gave that four stars by Danielle Clayton it was beautifully and it was just it was beautifully written it was so amazing and I just I love the world so much and um, I actually had an e-art copy from NetGalley but I really think I'm gonna go and buy it so that way with the next book I can have the actual physical copies I just I loved it so much it was so uh, so amazing like it's such a beautiful book you guys if you haven't read it you should definitely read it it should be on your radar and then the last book that I read this month was What Lies Beneath by Richard P. Denny, one of our own, and you guys should check out his booktube channel. I gave this four stars, guys. Like, I loved it. It was amazing. It was like, it was really done in horror movie fashion. Like, it was just horror movie-ish. You know, like, when you read a book, you're just like, yeah, that's definitely a horror movie. That's the best I can describe this. It was really great. I really enjoyed it. It is a memory novel, so it's scary, but it's not, like, it's spooky, but it's not give you nightmares. 
It was four star. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was very beautiful. I just, I really, I don't know what else to say about it except that I loved it. Like it was really deep and I really connected to it. And I don't know. I'm ready to read the second collection. I don't know if they're supposed to like kind of go and tow with each other or not, but I can't wait to read that one too. Now on to our month of May. Guys, I'm like so proud of myself. I read 10 books last month. And when I say books, I mean books. I may have read three or four graphic novels, collection of poetry, but novels, people. Proud of myself. I don't know what happened to me last month. It may have something to do with I'm doing a challenge on Goodreads um, that's in the book club that I'm in. It's called The Last Person Standing The Last Person Standing Challenge. So I signed up for this and I think when it started off, I had like 26 books. And now it's down to, I want to say, the last, uh, the last nine, whatever. And how it goes, everybody starts off with six points. Every week, there's three different tasks. Three different reading tasks. It'll be like read a book that has uh, an animal you see at the park on the cover. That'll be task one. Task two will be read an urban fantasy. But to get to task two, you have to complete task one first. So after you complete task one, you get a point. You get a one point for every task you complete. But if you don't complete either of the three tasks that week, you lose two of the points. So you start with six, and if you don't complete any one of those tasks that first week, you lose two points you're down to four. And it keeps going until there's only one person left. And the guy, I'm proud of myself. I'm number three. And I, I don't know, I just really took this series. Like, I'll sign up for challenges and stuff like this, and I won't. Continue with it, I won't take it serious, and I don't know, like something just kicked into overdrive when you got there. I think I had to do with that, which is why I read so much last night, and I'm on a really good track. This one is one already, too, like I'm so proud of myself. So I think currently right now I have 15 points. The two people in the lead has 18 points. So if I complete all three challenges this week, I'll be caught up with them depending on how many challenges they complete this week as well. Um, I don't even know what you get when you win. I honestly don't know, but I was just like, I want to be a winner, so we're going to keep this going. It's supposed to keep going to the last person, because one person left, but they do have a cutoff date, but that's not until September, so God knows how long this is going to go. So but we will see. Okay, so back to the whole point of this, my rambling. Um, I actually had eight books originally on my TBR. On those, I, off the, out of the books that were on my actual TBR, I only read five of the books that were on my actual TBR. And the other five came from books added from the challenges. Okay, so, um, I'm not going to say these in order, just how I wrote them down. I don't know why I didn't just write them in order, but the first book I'm going to talk about is King's Cage. I finally read it y'all I finally read it and I finished it and I gave it four stars I actually listened I actually read half of it and then I switched over to the audio book to finish the rest of it the audio book was on Hoopla Hoopla Digital no they don't pay me the sponsor for them but I just think it's a really good app you get to listen to audio books for free versus because I would never be a part of audible never because it's I'm not paying $19.99 a month for one book credit and then if I want to listen to more that month, then I have to buy them anyway. So, no, that's ridiculous. Hoopla is completely free. It's linked to your library card. So, if you have a library card, even if you just go and get a library card just for that purpose, that is totally cool. So, even when you first go on there to sign up, it'll let you know. Like, it'll search your location. It'll let you know what libraries in your location they do it with. Because not every library does it, but majority of them do. Just so you know. Um, but I, if I was going to rate the audiobook, I would give the audiobook three stars because, like, there were three or four different people voicing the characters, but one of them sounded very mechanical, and I don't know if it was because of the speed I was reading in that, but it just didn't sound very good. Like, the voices were done well. Also, the male voices, like, yeah, no, we should have had some guys in there because they just weren't 
Yeah, they weren't amazing. So I would have to give the audiobook three stars, but we're just going to rate the book as a content based four stars. I really enjoyed myself. I'm so happy I finally read it. And I have four stars, so I don't know if I'm going to read that this month. It will go for my third test that I'm supposed to complete for the last person standing challenge, but I just, I don't know if I'm going to have time to read that in a week. Then, um, the book, then I read Paper Towns. I DNF that one. It's Paper Towns, guys, by John Green. I DNF'd it at 43%. Now, this was my first John Green book, and I just, that's a lot about it that I just wasn't feeling. I just wasn't into it. It's like, first of all, it started off, like, really slow. It took a long time to actually get into what we were supposed to get into like i just thought we was going to get into her going missing like margo missing just like that and know we was going to wait half the freaking book before she actually disappeared okay but i mean in the meantime everything that you know the setup and everything i kind of like the setup okay now another downfall is i didn't like that he felt that john green felt like he had to like physically tell us that oh yeah they are black characters like, he literally would say, oh, my African-American friend. It's like, okay, I didn't need to, there's other, I feel like there's other ways he could have told us that they were African-American versus saying, just point out, oh, my African-American friend. Or, oh, I looked up and it was this, you know, this beautiful, um, this beautiful African-American dreadhead girl. It's like, or this beautiful black girl, something like that. He says this, this, he looked up and it was like, this beautiful, um, this beautiful black girl with dreads or african-american girl with dreads or something like that but i was just like why do he have to just like that's a better way he could have described like them to us th that we would have gotten it with black versus just saying oh they're black they're african-american just flat out you know i just felt like he could have did it more creative than that and that started to get on my nerves i was like okay we don't need to yeah you don't have to physically out loud that's like in person i walk up to you oh hey it's my black friend like you know Margot was bitchy and selfish and I just was like not I didn't really like how it ended I did end up I didn't up to that 43% but I did skip to the end to see how everything ended and I just thought it was stupid that it ended that way but I have a rule for myself when I DNF books now I have to make it at least 25% of the way through before I start thinking about DNF it if I make it to exactly 25% of that book and I be like okay yeah I'm done I'm DNFing you that's fine I just make myself make it at least a quarter of the way through the book and then between that quarter of the way of the book and 50%, if I don't DNF about 50%, then it's not getting DNF. That is my DNF zone. Between 25% of the book and 50% of the book. If I make it past 50% of the book, I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to DNF it once I hit 50%. That's my rule. That's me personally. I don't know how everybody else. I know a lot of people don't like to do that. I used to be that person that was like, no, I started, I have to finish it, but I'm not forcing myself to do it anymore because that's how I get in reading slumps, making myself read something I don't want to read, and then I'm just... Oh, I'm tired out, don't want to read anymore. But that book I ended up giving, I, I don't know what I would have gave it if I was finished. I just, I wasn't feeling it. It didn't have me at all. Like, eh, uh, no, I didn't like it. I think I still did a review for it and I did put that idea in after it. I know some people don't feel like you shouldn't do a review if you did after the book, but I'm going to tell you why I did after it. And then I read Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick and I gave this three stars. And this book was uh, from a, a recommended Buttery's thing that I did on the my book club that I'm in on, on Goodreads. It's a recommended book challenge and you get randomly paired with somebody else that signed up for it and you recommend them a book that you've read and like that you think they'll like and then they recommend you a book that they've read and they like and they think you will like and that's the book that my partner recommended for me and I gave it three stars. I liked it. It had its ups and its down. I'm going to do a review for it so I don't want because this video is already going to be long and I don't want to make it too long. But um, it's basically about this boy Leonard Peacock. He had... I don't want to say what it is, but he had a, a fallout with his best friend that he grew up with and he it starts to take over his life. He doesn't really have any friends. His, his mom isn't around, so he's having a hard life, so he decides that he's going to take his grandfather's old Nazi war gun with him to school. It's like a little handheld gun, but he used it in a war. But he decides to take it to school with him and he says he's going to kill his best friend and then he's going to kill himself. And that's, we're basically following him through the school day as he gives these three significant people in his lives gifts and tries to tell them goodbye. And you're supposed to see if any of the friends are going to catch on. I feel like saying that they're friends is just such like an overstatement. Like I, 
I wouldn't necessarily call them a friend, but it's people that he felt like were his friends, and that's his parting gifts to them. So, um, I'm going to do a video review on it, because I do have a lot of thoughts on the book. You know, it's give or take. It was good. It, I'm like this with the recommend. I'm really in the middle because I'm like, eh, you know. But I'll get all into that on my review. And then I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I learned how to say your last name because the last time I bought this book up, I could not say the last name. But I gave that book up five stars. I loved that book so freaking much. That is a book. That's one of my, my most anticipated releases as well. I love that book so much. Oh my god, I fell in love with that book reading it. It was just so strong and so powerful. It was just... It's like, I loved it so much. It was hard for me to really come through and pick favorites because I really loved all of them. So it was so hard. You know how hard it is to pick favorites out of your favorites? You know, like it's so hard to pick favorite moments out of your favorite moments. Like, that was the hardest thing I was doing. But I just... Those just, these moments really, really stood out to me on top. I think y'all should pick this up. Um, I haven't heard BookTube talk about this a lot at all. I'm also going to do a review for this as well. Because I really have not seen this on BookTube as much as I thought I was going to see it on BookTube. So I want to be one of those few, you know, one of those few that brings this book to the sunlight, you know. I love this so freaking much. It's not, I, I've heard people talk about it before it came out. But since it has come out, I haven't seen people really talk about it. A lot of people want to read it, and I just want to give y'all my thoughts on it. It was so amazing, y'all. So amazing. Then I read Fresh Ink by Lamar Giles. I gave that three stars. That is an anthology collection. It's about, like, it's, it's, a, it's 12 different stories told from 12 different authors. And it's 10 stories. It's 10 short stories. Um... Uh, a play and a graphic novel or a comic I should say not a graphic novel and uh, it was I liked the majority of them I guess I should say so that's why I ended up getting the three stars um I, this was an e-copy that I got from that galley this doesn't come out until gosh when does this come out I don't think this even comes out until August to be honest but I'm going to put it on the screen when it comes out but I don't think it comes out until August but I was just trying to get some of my um, my arcs out of the way that I had and chop down my negative list as well. Um, I like the majority of the stories. I think I liked seven, seven out of the twelve. If it's twelve stories, it might be ten. I might be adding extra. No, I think it's twelve. But I read seven or eight, so I read I like seven or eight of them. I really liked, so I liked the majority of them. Um, I didn't, I did not like the comic that they had in there. That was not one of them. I didn't care for it. It was alright, but it was not one of my favorites, not at all. But, um, yeah, I'm going to do a review for that too because it is a Nat Gale book that I did, so it's in strange for my review, which I already did my review, but I want to do a video one as well. Um, and yeah, we're going to leave that there. So, if you're thinking about picking it up, hold your horses until you hear my review. I'm not saying don't get it, but it's kind of like, it's kind of your buying option. Like, if you don't think you're going to like the whole thing as a whole, don't spend your money on it. Because I didn't like all of the stories. I felt like they, some of them could have really been taken out. It might not be your cup of tea. So that's all of the books that I had on my actual TBR. Now I'm going to get to the extra books that I ended up adding on and reading them. I read American Vampire Volume 1 by Scott Snyder and Stephen King. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, Scott Snyder is also the author of Witches, which is also another graphic novel, which I tell you all the time I love it. That was my first graphic novel I've ever read, and I really, really loved it. And I also really, really loved American Vampire as well. When I picked it up, I did not know that Stephen King had partnered with him to read it. This was supposed to be my urban fantasy challenge read for The Last Person Standing Challenge. And, oh my god, no, not urban fantasy. Was it urban fantasy? It may have been urban fantasy. Yeah. And I just, I loved it. Like, I loved it so much. It's like this, it's like two stories, but they intertwining with each other. Scott Snyder has his own story, and then Stephen King has his own story. Stephen King's story is supposed to be set in the past before Scott Snyder's story. Scott Snyder's story is the present day. So it's, they intertwine with each other, and it's showing how his story ended up getting to his story. It was amazing. I really loved it. I really freaking enjoyed it. I'm probably going to read Volume 2 at some point this month. I didn't think I was going to like it that much, and this really like reignited that, that craving for vampires that I used to have. 
but it seemed like I couldn't get that craving filled after Twilight. You know, I, I'm a Twilight. I love Twilight. It seemed like nothing I read with vampires after that matched up to what I was feeling for Twilight. But this was fucking amazing. Like, if y'all have read this, y'all know what I'm like raving about. I love this so much. Like, it was that good. Then I read um, The Bridge to Terabithia by Catherine Patterson. I gave this three stars. I watched the movie like a while ago, a couple times too, so I knew kind of what was gonna happen. So that makes it worse when I finally go to read the book and I'm reading the book and I'm like, oh my god, this feels so weird reading this and I know how this is gonna end. I know it's not gonna end well. And the whole time I'm reading this, I'm just like, oh my god, like I can't believe, like it's, everything is going so good. Like I can't believe that this is about to happen. I kept bracing at the end to like, is this it? Is this it? So I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, but I do have to say that I did like the movie better than I liked the book. And that's not always the case. Oh God, I hate saying that because a lot of times it's the other way around. I would say I would love the book more than I like the movie, but the movie was better than this book, y'all. Like, I hate to say it, but it's just one of those things. The movie was way better. I wish that the book took more on of the movie than the, you know, than the opposite way around. And then I read Masters Volume 1, The Awakening by Marjorie M. Lou. And I gave this three stars as well. I'm kind of on the fence on if I'm going to continue reading this one. I just, I'm, I'm not sure where to go with it. I'm kind of like, I, when I first started off, I was a little bit confused as to what was going on. But there are certain points I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? I'm, I'm a little lost. Um, but the art was beautiful. Like, the art was beautiful. Um, I just, eh, I don't know. I don't know if it's really one of those stories that I want to continue. I'm kind of good leaving it at volume one, to be honest. So I don't really feel like, I don't know if I want to continue to finish it. But we'll see. I may have a challenge that might call for that second volume. And that's probably when I would probably bring it up. But I'm mad because I was so excited to actually read this. This was one of the graphic novels I was really excited about. Because I've seen a lot of people say they really enjoyed it. But at the same time, I did see a couple people say they didn't. And I have to be in the middle because I liked it, but I didn't like it at the same time. I had my moments, and um, yeah, my review can explain this way better. <laughs> and then I read Library of Souls by Richard P. Denny, our very own, again, go see his channel, people. Like, this book, I gave five stars, okay? And I think he's releasing the second one soon. If y'all follow him on Twitter, Instagram, so and so, I think he's about to do the second book because he posted something like a couple days ago and I think book two is coming very soon and I'm excited for that. Like I'm so excited for another Library of Souls y'all. Like I'm pumped. This was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. This is one of those books that it is a horror book again but it's middle grade. Um, so it's kind of like it's horror but it's watered down horror. It's not like adult horror. This is one of those horror books that would be perfectly fine for reading to Kalea for a bedtime story. Why for bedtime? But I'm saying, you know, I think this would be a great entrance to horror because it's not, it's not scare you to death horror. It's like really clean, but like, I don't know how to say it. Like it's, it's like a clean horror, but it's very intricate. Like it has so many layers on top of it, but at the same time, it's not eat your eyeballs out scary. Like, you know? God, I'm terrible at this today. I don't know what it is. Like, I just think this is going on so long. I'm trying to rush my way through and I can't get my thoughts together. But I really enjoyed this book. I did write a review for it. I'm going to do, like, some collective reviews on the books that I've read, depending on how long they are and what I have to say about them. So just stay tuned to my channel and my thoughts will be put together better by then. I promise. But thank you guys for watching this video. That is all the books that I have for my wrap up from February to May. Gosh, y'all, like I have read so many books last month. I'm like really proud of myself. Thank you guys <laughs> for watching my video. I've been out of practice and I haven't been that long since I've been in front of this camera. It really has not. But thank you guys for watching my video. Sorry that it's so long. <sighs> um, let me know in the comments if you read any of the books that I've read recently, which is all about them. If you're looking to read any books that I've read recently. And yeah, that's it. See you guys later. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.